What is up, everybody? Welcome to Late Night Gamers Podcast, episode number 131. I'm Nick Perzanowski, and with me this weekend, every week, is Charles Caldwell. I wanted to smash my computer real bad. We were pretty sure that you actually did smash your computer, and that was the reason that you couldn't get on. I, at one moment, I definitely tore the face off of it and threw it across the <laughs> Tim Madden. Tim Mystic. And Steve Morgan. Comb your beard. <laughs> What was that from? Is that from the Juggernaut video? Yeah, I watched that a bunch yeah. that this weekend, so I just felt like I had to put at least one quote in there. I might just <laughs> yell random quotes out during the podcast today. Like Charles, oh, get out of my head. Charles. Get out of my head, Charles. It's the Juggernaut, bitch, and I hit you with your own pimp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the... Well, Charles... Xavier, is, it's perfect because Charles is on this podcast, so we... Uh... We did actually, at one episode when Charles wasn't here, I had a gif of Xavier <laughs> in your spot. Um, with little, like, waves coming out of his head and stuff. Sorry. Perfect. Get out of my head, Charles. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> so all of us went to, a, uh, went to a going away party this weekend for a friend. And that was that was where we were all talking about Jokes, YouTube, vi- <laughs> YouTube videos and oh God. So all much. kinds of other nonsense. It was basically like a high school reunion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. It started and ended with school, like school stories. Every except, story, except that, it, except that at this high school reunion, we only saw the people that we wanted to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have to, normal you really one, have right? a high school reunion. I don't even consider that. The high school reunion it was like a going to wellington on a, in a, any given day and just seeing a bunch of people you know from a high school I was wellington kind of, is uh, wellington is a state park with a beach yeah. on a lake that is like open to the public and costs nothing there was a lot of children <laughs> there was a lot of children that's true there was yeah. people with children that are like in middle school multiple children and i was just like god damn mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's crazy. Someone's like having a baby, and I'm like, "What a great accomplishment!" I'm trying to get my rank up in Overwatch to platinum, so it's like we're almost like have the same priorities in life. I don't know. Having it's a like, baby is having a baby an uh, accomplishment, or is that just a biological process? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Having depends a, on how you look at it. Raising a a baby to grow up to be a good is an accomplishment. Yes, it's true. Yes. Raising a successful child is is an accomplishment. Having a baby is negligence. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> the work I don't think the work comes from having like actually But everyone <laughs> says congratulations when someone has a kid. Why do we say that? We always say that. It's like when well, someone gets married, it's like congratulations, it's like you just you're gonna do it anyways. It's not like you you made some like you know like genes will live on. Hurrah. It's not like some difficult decision or some like obstacle to overcome. But I'm always like, Congratulations, you got married and then I'm like, Why am I saying congratulations? Like it's just it's a strange thing. It's a strange yeah. world that we live in. It is it is. I get you know, it depends. Some people do have a hard time having a child, so maybe yeah, that's maybe that's true. where it comes from. But then there's the people that shouldn't be having children and they have like 12 and it's like. For me, I think when I say congratulations. Just wave it around and they're immediately pregnant. I think for me, it's like, I'm just like, congratulations. You're doing something I can't even begin to fathom to achieve. So it's like, for me, it's more just like, holy shit, you did it. Like somehow, like I can't even like do it without like waking up in a cold sweat. So just thinking about it. So. (laughs) So I guess that's kind of my mentality behind it. It's like, goddamn, more power to you. Good luck. But yep. so yeah, high school reunion this weekend was good. <laughs> A lot of video game talk there. Yep. Kind of YouTube talk. Yep. We slept in tents. I, I yeah, thought it was funny true. that it was just you guys sleeping in the tents. That everyone else. Yeah, yeah, everybody party. else was inside. <laughs> A friend was like, "Yeah, you <laughs> guys just." Finished. You guys need to sleep in tents. We're gonna have tents. People are gonna be sleeping in tents. We got there like, all all his like 
fiance's friends were sleeping inside and then he, he all his friends are sleeping out on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Symbolic. Yep. Yep. That is that is pretty much what happened, but No, man, it was I got a question for you guys cuz I didn't talk to you since I did it rain the next day because that was yes. like yes. Yeah, it rained it rained that night into the morning. Oh god. That was like I woke up the next morning like at Ryan's and I was like made the best decision of my life cuz I like, had all the shit like I had blankets and like air mattress everything and I was just like Whoa, brutal. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Like we didn't get wet no, or anything. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I did wake up at one point, realized that it was raining and realized that the like the bottom part of the tent, like the bottom part of the tent door wasn't zipped <laughs> and it was just leaking into the tent and I was like, <laughs> "Oh no." <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but well, no, nah, it's fine. You guys survived. So, yeah. We did. We did. Although before we, sh- before we I left my I left my shoes outside the tent and uh, they got wet and now they smell like unbelievably bad. It's like really like I've never had shoes smell that bad before. It's just it's horrible. I'm gonna have to throw them out. It's just not worth it. Yeah, Charles, yeah. Charles and I walked by the tent early like early in the morning and Charles was like, his shoes are outside. You should probably put them in the tent. And I was like, they're already really soaked. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we did, uh, Charles, Tim and I went to go see the Blair Witch before, uh, or Blair Witch, what's it, what's it called? What's the new one? Blair Fire Witch Project Witch. is the original one. Just the Blair Witch is this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Went to see that before we went over to, to our friends and, uh, it was mediocre. <laughs> yeah. I had a high, I think, well, I mean, I had, I had low expectations, but I wanted to be surprised and have it be good, but it yeah. was... There were some good aspects of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think... I think it was... Like, I, I think they had too many... They, they, they made it, so then it was like... There were way too many video cameras going on. Yeah. Where there was like... Every single person had like a little Bluetooth ear mic thing. Oh, yeah. And then, it felt and then like was, almost like a vapor like a sci-fi channel movie with the amount of technology that they were affording. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only affording, but like it, it just like, because they had so many camera angles, it just felt like they were filming a normal movie. Yeah. And less like, less like the original Blair Witch, Pro- or Blair Witch project, which was like, you know, a high eight. <laughs> you know what I learned DVD from the whole tape. thing is that the Blair Witch is a really good editor. She spliced together all of these videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, I'm not going to this actual And then movie. she left them in the woods. <laughs> That's her entire thing. Is like she's like, this is my art project. I go and I murder a bunch of people, and then I splice together the footage of what they record, and it looks beautiful. I mean, it's obviously so obviously so ridiculous because everyone's like dying at the end, and they're still carrying around the cameras like. Like, you would not be, if you were in, like, if you had your leg lopped off, you're not carrying around the camera with you. You're, like, throwing that camera down and crawling around. But, like, you know, I mean, it, it just kind of followed, like, the standard, uh, like, you know, the standard um, found footage formula. It was, like, it was like Blair Witch meets uh, um, Paranormal Activity. It was nothing unique about it, which is was kind of the bummer because it's, like, the original Blair Witch was so... I mean, it wasn't. I mean, it was like good in its own way, and I think if they could like, you know, done that again, it would have been good. But well, I feel like I feel like there was so much more that could have been explored in the movie. Um, yeah. They, you know, they brought you to the house that at, that was at the end of the other movie, um, and I feel like they could have explored the house a little bit more, or ha- had the house more in it, um, and ex- and. Tr- like somehow explained a little bit more about it and more yeah, about its a narrative around the Blair Witch other than the legends about the Blair Witch. Yeah, not just these like two dumb guy, these two dumb people that live nearby and like tricked them to coming out into the woods and then like I don't know. There there was a lot of time spent just out in the woods again and um I feel like the house could have been a much bigger presence cuz there were some there were definitely some really cool aspects of that ha- of the house. And, and I don't want to go into too many, 
Yeah, I don't I don't want to like spoil anything, but although the the <laughs> like the brand new mattress that was in the house, <laughs> yeah, that, that was funny. It's, it's supposed to be like a house from like the 1700s, and uh, like everything else is really old, like all these like really old like latch doors, doorknobs, and like everything's like falling apart. And then in in one of the bedrooms is a mattress on a metal frame with like handles, and I'm like, what? Yeah, it's like a brand new Serta. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. But yeah, I mean it's if you if you like the original, it's worth going to see just because it does like that there was a cool kind of a cool concept like in the at the end you find out like how the tapes got there and the origins of the tapes that they found in the woods and that that was kind of cool. Um yeah. I was I wasn't completely expecting that, but um yeah. So Worth a watch, but there's definitely some good, good horror movies coming out this fall too. So I don't know what any of them are. <laughs> just I just remember seeing that there were a bunch. Yes. Um, oh yeah, the trailers. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of uh, stuff about contagion. I think that was a general theme of all the horror movies that we saw trailers for. It was like this movie's about us. This is a sequel to The Ring. Contagion. This is a movie about. Zombies, the contagion, everything is contaminating everyone, run! <laughs> oh, that's right, uh, what, rings. The rings. Everyone's yeah. watching on the plane, I'm like, man, it's a better movie than what I saw when I was flying last time. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. the fuck is this? I just remember, I was I was flying once, um, I think it was, I don't know where I was going, but I, I just remember, I was watching the first, uh, I was watching the the first uh, Final Destination movie, and I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> like, like, fuck. I, like in the first like 20 minutes, like uh, the the uh, the plane with ever like uh, the whole class on board just explodes. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna continue watching this. It's too good. It's ridiculous. They need to make another Final Destination movie. That movie was that movie was good. Oh, the God. second. One, they had a 3D one, I think, was the last one, right? Yeah. Or it was the Final Destination. Oh, the shit. Final Destination, yeah. The, uh, I my I think my favorite. Well, the first one was definitely awesome, and then the second one, the the first one was awesome because it was actually like fairly good, and then the second one was awesome because it had some really awesome death scenes, which was like yeah. the the pane of glass that falls out of that like 40-story building window. <laughs> It just like completely explodes the guy on the ground. <laughs> so good. Or that tr- the truck with the piece of wood that drops off the back and then smashes through the front end of the car. God damn. I gotta I watch was, that movie again. I was like the one that I don't know which one it is. I think it's one of the later ones where there's like an escalator and the guy falls in the escalator and just like blah 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 blah. Just gets mushed into a million pieces. You're lucky, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that's his real problem on escalators. People die in them all the time. It's kind of fucked up. Not getting <laughs> mushed up, but I don't really know. But it's ridiculous. Yep. Speaking of horror movies, I saw uh, I saw a pre showing of Deepwater Horizon. So if anyone's interested, oh, how was that? <laughs> it's not actually a horror movie, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we saw the trailer for that. It was actually really good. It was actually much better than I thought. I mean, granted, I I like work in like uh, I work in rock fracture and like semi oil and gas, so it's like. I feel like it was wicked. T- I thought I, I walked in and was like, oh, it's going to be not technical. And I'm just going to be like, this sucks. This is stupid. Like, bl- like when I watch like Big Bang Theory. But then I actually, for the most part, I was like, I remember like halfway through it being like, this is way too technically intense. Like, they're just like, why isn't Slumbo J here doing the concrete tests? Like, they need the borehole cap immediately. I'm like, dude, no <laughs> one in here gets any of these things. Like, chill. <laughs> like, this is way, way too advanced. And they're just like talking that's, that's about the- that's what the words come through to you, Steve. Everyone else in the theater is hearing. Wah, 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 wah. I remember reading like I was trying to find like what was real and was. I mean, it's super over. Okay, so it's super over dramatized. Like there's explosions and the villainization of like certain people. I'm sure. Like I don't know the facts, so I was trying to find the facts and like everyone was just like, yeah, it was really confusing. I wasn't really sure what was going on most of the movie, but then like everything started blowing up. So then I kind of got that, and I was just like, okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was it was it was better than I thought. I mean, a lot of like I think on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff, it got like eighty or ninety percent. I'd probably oh, give it really in, good. probably give it in the eights or nines. I mean, nice. Mark Wahlberg was pretty good. I would probably give it an eight or something. Like it was the good. BP, the bad guy in the movie. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
And Mark Wahlberg is like supposed to be like Texas, but then like halfway through it, he just becomes Boston because it's just like <laughs> national. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty good, though. I mean, it's 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 sort of like they did a really good job. Like the director, or whoever, like did a good job of sort of like building suspense on kind of boring shit and like kind of like having a lot of emotion in it. And it was it was clearly over dramatized, but it was uh, much better than I thought. So I'd give it a chance. I don't know. if... I mean, I don't know if I'd go and see it in theaters if it's not something that, like, interests you, but it's definitely worth, like, watching it when it comes out of theaters. So. Nice. Late night movie well, watchers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, let's uh, let's let's tran- uh, transfer over to some gaming news. And since we were talking about BP and they got sued hardcore for, uh, for everything that they did and all the part that ha- they had and all that... Um, a developer um, recently has uh, tried to sue some users on Steam for giving bad reviews, which is a pretty terrible, uh, terrible precedent to set right there. So um, it's it's digital homicide, and they, uh, the developer, has said that um, basically, I mean, they they got. I think the game was terrible. Whatever the game was that they released, I don't remember what the name of it was. It was terrible. It got horrible reviews across the board. Um, and I think some are, some people, like... And I wrote I wrote an opinion piece on it this week, but um, I just... I Like, they were saying that they were getting abusive and threatening comments in some of the... in, in some of the reviews and, and blah, 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 death threats and things. So they're suing users... Um, a cert, or they're trying to sue a certain number of users on Steam um, that were responsible for some of these uh, more, I guess, some of these reviews and such. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, this is internet hyperbole, and it's, you know, it's I, not that I agree with, you know, some of these comments. I don't, you know, I don't think you should be saying, I want to kill this developer, or like, blah, blah, blah. I think, you know, that's like, that's over the top, but... Um, I also think that suing have them taken down. Petitions yeah, exactly. Have taken down or something. Have Steam? Yeah, it should have been something that went through Steam, and or Valve, and have the have the you know reviews reported, taken down, and then you know the the users could be banned or punished for for whatever like for what they did, but suing them outside of that is. It just seems like an over-the-top response. How do they even from... get their information? I guess maybe they... some of them are public. It's you know, it's versus John Doe. You know, they have to wait to get the yeah. Well, that's a, that's the other thing is it's all private information through Steam, and um, Digital Homicide is trying to basically get a subpoena so they get so they can get the information about all of these users that posted these reviews. And um, Steam's response was to remove all of Digital Homicide's games from the Steam and, <laughs> um, for for uh, basically making threatening for threatening users on on Steam. And um, you know, I, I feel I, I feel like that's not an unreasonable response, given that it, it doesn't <laughs> sound. It doesn't sound like they went through Steam first. Like it should yeah, have been yeah. Digital Homicide and Steam having a conversation, saying, "Look, these are reviews. Like, you know, bad reviews you know, aside, yeah. these comments but are 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 not acceptable." Didn't didn't Steam now make it so that you can't review Steam games unless you purchase them through Steam? I think this is like a result yeah. of this. Yeah, they just they had a that was I think that's partially what caused that it. it was a you know there's been a big uproar because they. You know, there was a a lot of developers were inflating the uh, the the scores of their game by giving out free copies and just saying, you know, we'll give you a free copy, but you have to give us a good review. So the you know, so what they did was they just made it so that you can't review it unless you you, you purchase you physically purchase the game on Steam, and it caused a lot of games. You know, a lot of games weren't affected, but there were a few smaller developers that that score just went like. Just yep. flip flopped entirely, you know, went from positive to negative because of it. So, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of those cases where they, you know, they had artificially raised their score and then got screwed over when Steam made that change, and now they're like, 
realizing it and trying to do it's, some damage I control. I think it's, like, a much better... I mean, I know a lot of people are pissed about it because, like, a lot of games, like... I think that also includes people, like, that get their game through Humble, Humble Bundle and, like, keys from other places. So it's, like... I don't know. I still think yeah. it's better that way because that way, like, yeah, you paid for the game for what it's worth. Like, I can give a game a good review because I paid five dollars for eight of them so it's like i just be like yeah it was it was good like i mean i played it for a couple hours and it was good like and i don't have to feel like i lost anything but the people that paid like 40 dollars for the game when it first comes out their like review should be worth way more than mine because they actually paid the full price and right. if it sucks it they're gonna know way faster than like i am i mean granted like no man's sky is probably like the alternative other end of the spectrum right where it's like way too expensive and then you shit all over it because your expectations are high, but I don't. Yeah. I, I still think that's like a good practice by Steam. I really have no problem being like I have no like self righteousness being like I bought all these games on Steam for five dollars. I should be able to review all of them. It's like no, like I didn't really buy it through Steam, so I really don't reserve the right, right to like to affect yeah. the score. It's not. The yeah, same. I mean, I think it, I think it's just like like on Amazon. Like you shouldn't be able to re- review something unless you bought it. Yeah. You know, I think that's a fair, and I understand it's it sucks that it like cuts out a hand, you know the people that bought them on other places, but I'd rather that than have like ten thousand reviews from like random assholes who are just giving a game like a shitty score yeah, or exactly. like a right. way over positive score. I think it, honestly, I think it's long overdue, and I think yeah. the the scores are gonna act uh, reflect reality a lot better now. Yeah, no, I can. I, I mean, agree. think about how much higher you'd give a game a score if you got given that game too. Like, just yeah. if someone's like, "Hey, have my game," even if it <laughs> sucks, you're probably more likely to give it a two or a three out of five than like. It didn't affect my opinion of Firewatch. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, some <laughs> some people may be some people may be less affected, but I'm gonna guarantee, like, most people subconsciously give it like a little bit better score just because you don't feel like you're indebted. Like, you're not like. Right. Or the other way around. Like, you don't feel like you're, yeah. like, lost money. You don't feel like you're just like, this sucks. I spent $30 on it, and it took me five hours to beat or something like that. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, I think that's definitely something that if you're actually becoming serious about writing reviews and getting codes from developers and things, then that's, that's something you definitely, you have to be unbiased, as unbiased as possible. Like, whether it's, that. whether it's, like, you know, it, you're, you're biased with the developer. You're biased against like how much you actually like. Like if you got it for free, you're biased against you know the genre. Blah 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 blah. Like it's it, it's all things that you have to just completely cut out and just say you know here, I'm I'm writing this like from a blank slate and yeah, the game is just fucking terrible in general. It's just terrible. <laughs> but um, so I I did uh a poll on Twitter and um, I asked, do you believe that digital homicide should be able to sue steam users over bad reviews? And uh, the two, the two responses were yes, if threatening or abusive or no. And then overwhelmingly 83% said no. So um, I would also be in that boat of saying that, no, I don't believe that they should be able to sue over that because if that's if that's the case that's setting a precedent that's like okay well basically i could sue like two thousand people on twitter right now because they said something something terrible about me or something you know it's like it's like that shit happens all the time if they're threatening you file a police report and you get the reviews cut like right it's it, it gets taken down like but i think they're doing it for monetary reasons because their game made no money because it's fucking terrible. <laughs> and they're like, they're suing for like $10 million. It's ridiculous. Oh. And they're, this is not the first time that they've done something like this where they, um, they've actually sued an interviewer. Um, I think it was earlier this year, Jim Sterling. I guess he's like pretty, uh, he's pretty popular. He's a pretty big name in like the video game review circles and whatnot and they they sued him for like a pretty pretty big amount of money and it's like because he wrote a bad review and i'm sure it was probably like 
you know, over the top, but that's that's how you get people to re- like honestly, that's how people like you get people to read your stuff. And I hate to say it, but you know, maybe don't take out don't like put in the abusive stuff or like personally threatening um comments, but um you know, I feel like the more hyperbolized your writing is, the more likely people are to want to read it. It's the Donald Trump of reviews. <laughs> it's the way media. That... It's the way media goes in all in all like facets. Yeah. Video games is not immune to that, so it's just the no. way it is. What were you gonna say, Tim? Go ahead. I I just think that you know for them this is probably uh you know a a, a mar- you know a marketing thing more than anything else because. They've got us talking about it. They've got people talking about it. I'm sure they have their downloads are up. I mean, the the purchase of their games are up because of it. Because more people, people are... want to see how bad it is. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. So, and, and you know, this is I guess that's what they say. There's no such thing as bad pu- publicity. So, that's true. you know, in the long run, people probably won't buy their stuff. But for the time being, they'll get a they'll get a big spike. They'll they'll buy it now, and then when their next game comes out, everyone will be like, oh yeah, that's that place that made the terrible game i'm never gonna buy any from them yeah 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 so uh that's uh i don't know we'll we'll see what happens with that that's a that that's a fairly recent thing i think that happened only a couple days ago so um we'll see how that turns out and we'll report on it a little bit more when when we hear more news and stuff um, we heard the original article from ARSTechnica.com just so then they're given their due. <laughs> um, some other stuff that we missed, we we uh, we didn't record last week and um, some big stuff happened that we completely were unable to talk about. So Tim, do you want to do you want to break the news to people who haven't heard about it, which I'm sure everyone has at this point, but it's pretty yeah. exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, so last last, or no, not, I guess it was two weeks ago, was the um, the Pokemon. I mean, not the Pokemon, the the uh, the Apple um, like iPhone reveal, the Apple keynote, and during the keynote they had uh, um, they announced Super Mario Run, um, and they actually had uh, Miyamoto come out and announce it, and uh, it looks pretty interesting. You know, it's just a it's just a runner. I mean, it's just like an endless runner. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's essentially Flappy Birds, but with Mario. But um, you know, it looked interesting. We'll we'll see what happens. It's the it's the first like real Nintendo um, mobile game. You know, we have like Pokemon, we have um, Mito or uh, Mitomo, but this is the first like old school Nintendo franchise that'll that'll be on a mobile phone. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what it's like. Um, but yeah, was, that was the big thing that came out of that. I think that, and I think that the, I think they're they're right to do it as a as an endless runner sort of thing, um, because that's uh, that that reduces the number of buttons that you really require yeah. playing the game. It's basically just gonna be it's gonna be jump and maybe maybe an attack button or something. Yeah. Um, but it's but I I feel like you know like Super Mario Three, which that's kind of how it looks. Um, it looks like a mix between Super Mario 3 with some, mm. like, 3D-esque graphics um, that are similar to, like, N64. And uh, I just, I, you know, the side-scrolling nature of it, I feel like, just lends itself really well to, to an endless runner sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, I agree. So. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, it still kind of keeps that feeling of, like, a Mario game where you're you're running and jumping and hitting blocks and and trying to get rid of you know jump on enemies and stuff but at the same time it has the simplicity of a mobile game so yep so that's cool what else yeah. we got uh yeah the other big thing that they announced was that um pokemon go is actually coming to the, to the apple watch which i thought was pretty interesting uh the new i guess the new apple watch has gps built in so now you can play you can put pokemon go on your wrist and you know literally have it with you all the time so i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but yeah it was interesting. I, w- I was um i was <laughs> somebody on twitter um i forget who it was posted a picture of the notifications they were getting from their um from the pokemon go 
I think it was on the on the watch, um, and it was like it was literally like, like every thirty seconds, and, <laughs> and it, all it said was uh, a Pokemon got away, a Pokemon fled, a Pokemon fled, oh, a Pokemon yeah. fled. <laughs> that's that's the that actually also came out as well. It's the Pokemon Go Plus, which is oh, is the, that what that is? Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the little it's like a little wrist, you know, peripheral that you can carry around that literally it's it's the worst thing ever like it um you know it the, there are a few good things like if you go by pokestops it'll automatically swipe them so you don't have to like have your phone open if you go by a pokestop you'll get it but if you go if a pokemon pops up it'll like try to automatically catch it so it just it just like throws like a like a regular pokeball at whatever pokemon you see and then just fails miserably every time so it's like really kind of useless yeah, because it's a total Brain waste of Pokemon. Pray. Yeah. But so, well, yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. How much does how much does that little peripheral go for? The well, that's you know I would have got I mean so originally the the original like the MS MSRP is thirty five bucks. So like I could that to me seems like reasonable. Like I could justify spending thirty five bucks to like never have to open my phone again and just get like a million <laughs> Pokestops, but. Now they've, they've it's been sold out for months and months and months. So now, like if you look on um, eBay and stuff, like the cheapest ones you find will be like sixty five, seventy bucks, and Jeez. and you know on Amazon they're up to like a hundred dollars. That's so insane. I, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. But I have a feeling the price, <laughs> unless they, I mean, I hopefully they churn out more. But I feel like the price is going to stay high forever. <laughs> <clears throat> they're just they're just going to stop making them. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then they're gonna just sell it to a third party, and then like It'll be worth a thousand dollars for the original. <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous. Well, cool. We have, shit. we have some decent, decent mobile stuff to look forward to then. Mm. Um, speaking of mobile, mobile gaming, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in here and talk about something I've been playing over the past week um, because uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with MC Lars. He's a nerdcore rapper and he's like, he's on the same uh, he's on the same level like similar to like MC Front a lot MC Chris. Um, you know, they rap, they rap about like everyday stuff, video game stuff. He, um, MC Lars uh, writes a lot of rap music about like literary stuff. So, you know, he talks about Edgar Allan Poe and, you know, all these different um, authors and, and takes stuff from their writing and puts it into the rap. And it's actually, it's really good. Um, but this past weekend, uh, MC Lars, the video game came out um, and I was able to review it. So uh, go check that out. That's on our website right now. Um, the review's up. And. I uh, well, first of all, it's developed by it. It's developed by Sinner Steel Studios, um, which I've. I, it's a indie studio I, I haven't heard of before, um, but I've been. I had written a couple emails back and forth with them, and they they've been really great. Um, I wrote my review, and you know, one of the only things that I cited as something that was bad was that um, you know, well, first of all, the game. The game is, uh, <laughs> it's a musical platformer, endless runner sort of thing. So you play MC Lars, you go through the level, you're trying to fight off these agents that are trying to get you to um, basically go uh, part of, be part of like uh, a studio and blah, blah, blah. They don't want you to give your, give them music away for free. And so you're fighting them off and you're jumping stuff. So, uh, and, and like breaking through walls and it's all set, like all the movements uh, should go in sync with the music and it's all every level is a separate song is a different song from mc lars so um it's it's pretty cool um and that's on ios and android um and it it i think it just got steam greenlit uh so they're i think they're moving forward with it on pc um but it's cool like the the song like the songs are great the uh it's an 8-bit style game and the um it's a lot of fun. It's super challenging. Uh, like as you progress, there's 12 different levels. Um, 
like the first level was like, or the first four levels were like, man, you know, they're, uh, you know, I'm just making it through. I was kind of get, uh, you can get up to three stars on every level. I was getting two stars on every single one without like really pushing it too hard. And then I was like, and then I, I started getting into like level two, like, uh, or um, like level seven and eight. And I was like, shit, it, like it started like, you know, you're, you, you had to time everything perfectly and to get three stars, you have to get like a super high score and it's um the game is super unforgiving because if you make one mistake you go back down to zero oh, so you shit. lose your entire score um and the songs are like you know like four minutes a piece so it's four minutes of total perfection to get three stars on any Jesus. of these levels so it's like good god like you really have to go through and like work hard um, but the more stars you collect, there's different costumes that you can unlock to play during the levels and, and whatnot. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I actually, I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit and I think I, I, I actually played it on PC cause that's the version we were given. Um, but, uh, I think that, um, I think it would lend itself really well. And most endless runners lend it, lend themselves really well to, uh, uh, to like mobile, mobile platforms and stuff. So. Um, but the music is super good, so definitely put some headphones on that are that are decent because it's worth it. Uh, but yeah, check that out. Check out the review, and uh, we're also um, we got a code to give away for the game on iOS, uh, and I put that on. I have that ready to give away on Twitter right now. So go out there and retweet our pinned tweet right now, which is uh, which is a link to our uh, the review of the game. So if you retweet, then you have a chance to win the game. It's five bucks on iOS and Android. So easy money. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> that's I th- that's pretty much all I've played this week. I didn't uh, a bunch of Call of Duty, a lot of pissed off time, but. <laughs> <laughs> cool. what, what about you guys, Charles? So my jumping back and forth between Fallout 4 and Deus Ex, uh, Mankind Divided has come to an end. I am devoting all of my time for today, X Mankind Divided until I beat it. Um, just because I got sucked into it and I enjoy, I enjoy it more than Fallout, so I'm just going to go for it. Um, right now I've just been like stealthily sneaking around. My play style in that game is always the same. It's like pressing F5 a ton, so I ought to say, and then just doing everything. like sucking up every possible experience point you can. <laughs> so you get experience for like hacking things. So like try a hundred times to hack a door <laughs> to get to that door and then like reload my save if I fail. Because if you fail, then it's, it's the like door shuts down. Yeah. So I like, I go through that a hundred times. Or like I'm like knocking everyone out and <laughs> even people that I don't need to, I'm just like backtracking so I can like knock people out. Just go through the entire <laughs> level. And then I'm, like, shutting down every uh, computer panel I can because you get, like, five experience points. I'm just, like, sucking it all in so that I can get more abilities later on. But, Perfection like, is open world grinding right now. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. And there's random shit that I didn't even realize. And I'm realizing now, like, if you read a book, it's like, <laughs> you read a book, 100 experience. I'm God. like, shit. The Skyrim everybody. model. Yes. Yeah. Every book I see, I'm like... I don't give a shit. I'm getting in that room to get through that book. So it's like, I got to go around the guy, knock out the guy, go read the book, and like sneak, sneak into a vent, and then like go up two floors, and then like bash down a wall, and then there's another book, and then there's some uh, random shit. So it's, I'm having a good time. Good. The story's good so far, though. I'm not really sure how far I am through it, mostly because it takes me probably 10 times the normal length of time to get through an area because I literally. I'm like scouring it for any potential experience. So. Yeah, is it is it an open world, or no? It's uh, well, it's not exactly open world. I mean, you're kind of set into a city, so you get the same map to go around and navigate in. Mm-hmm. I probably compare it a little more to, I don't know, like Borderlands, I guess. In that okay. you get to, I mean, it's much smaller than Borderlands as for terms of the map, but the city is pretty. In, like in depth like you get to go in buildings you're not like that's cool there's the main storyline that you need to go on in order to progress but you can kind of wander around and steal shit and buy new shit and uh, 
I mean, it is definitely on a narrative, and there's different side quests you can do. So I've been doing all of those and kind of scouring, scouring. Before I even went to do any quests, I literally explored the entire map and was like sneaking into buildings and like, "Hey, can I hack this?" Well, they're now looking. It's the story of a man and his quest for knowledge, knocking out <laughs> people to get books and read them. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's amazing. What about you, Tim? I've just been wa- nothing but WoW and Pokemon <laughs> Go, man. It's a lifestyle now. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, just been grinding a lot in WoW, doing world quests. Uh, I haven't done any mythics yet. And I, you know, probably because it's not, you have to, like, actually find people to group up with. So, um, I'll probably start doing those soon. And, uh, other than that, I have 12 other 100s to level up, so the grind is real. <laughs> That's about it. Sweet. Steve. Nice. Man, I have been playing WoW, uh, WoW very limitedly, pretty much just to do my dailies and stuff, and also a lot of Overwatch. I played. I've been playing with like a six-stack, Last week I played with a six stack and we almost made diamond, which is like top ten percent. And uh, mm-hmm. then I played this week and lost like twelve games in a row, so now I'm almost down to gold, which is like probably like average. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's been a been a pretty devastating week this week so far. I'm get last night I had like I was just like freaking screaming like I hate this game. It's just the worst. <laughs> so uh, it's just it's it's a fun game when you have people to play with. It's very frustrating when you play with random people in the competitive mode. And the game is very different when you know, like most games when you play like ranked versus non ranked versus like with a group and not a group. It's just the the game is completely different. So uh, yeah, I've been playing that and then I've. I started loading up my Humble Bundle monthly from last week. I downloaded WWE. I can't wait to make some fat-ass guy that, like... Um... <laughs> I smell barbecue! <laughs> <laughs> it got horrible review. I mean, not horrible, like, maybe 70s out of 100 or something, but I, I can only expect worse out of it than that, so... I gave that away, and... I, and uh... I give, I've been giving away codes every Friday, and I've basically given away all of the games on my Humble Bundle list right now. Dude, I'm just is, like, I'm just wondering, okay like, with, can I like, can I do like ranked tag team matches and stuff like online with somebody else? Like, I just tag in, then I beat the shit out of some guy, and then then I just like pin him off of a ladder, and then we like get ranked <laughs> or something. Like, I just. I'm really, really cool. I'm really, conf- I'm really confused as to what the gameplay is like. Is there a story mode in it? Is it like, or is there like a franchise mode where I start as like a like a chump and then I have to like beat the <laughs> shit out of people and make my way to like becoming the the I I am WWE heavyweight champion. <laughs> There's there's a, a, a thousand percent chance I'm going to be disappointed because it's going to be none of these things, but I'm really interested <laughs> in seeing what it actually is. So now in these games, like you get you you, you have the ability to make a character, right? Okay. Like should. you should. Which, okay. That that's my that it's a question. It's, it's I I don't know, but if it doesn't, sure. um, if it doesn't, well, I give up. Okay. Sixty four back in the day did. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if they could do it on N sixty four, I think they they can add it in in like two seconds now. That doesn't mean but, that they have it, but <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. I well, if if you can make a character, I hope that you can also make their like intro and like. <laughs> make it so then like when they walk in make it as ridiculous as possible because i would just want like flaming things and like fucking fireworks and um i don't know like ladies in bikinis standing yeah. like a line of like 15 of them and then what like a shirley me- temple song or something like just playing in the background <laughs> yeah oh, absolutely no, no. on the good boring. ship lollipop and then the guy puts <laughs> explosions and shit and he's like well, dabbing. Before you had to choo- choose from uh, a wrestler's song. Oh, so, okay. And then you could choose like colors and things you wanted to appear on the screen so you could make it really weird. Nice. I'm just going to make my guy look like somebody I know and then have like Ric Flair's voice on it or something. Just <laughs> some strange shit happening. Skinny Joe and Harry the Fat Man. Were yeah. Two that were made. <laughs> Do like a three foot tall midget and like a seven foot tall 400 pound guy. 
then have them like do the tag team moves where they like whip each other around and throw them from across. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I can't wait. I'm sure. Uh, all I know is everything I'm imagining is way better than the game's actually gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I can't even believe it's on PC. Like somebody actually made a PC version. They were I, usually they're just like, "Fuck it, let's just put it on like Xbox and PlayStation and just praise some guy who likes WWE buys it." <laughs> well, I was gonna say the demographic doesn't seem to exist on PC for that <laughs> kind of game. But... It's just hey. me. It's just me who's excited. About <laughs> it. Anyways, that's that. All right. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the podcast. Unless you guys have something else that you want to say. Yeah. Do you have a top five we could do? Top five wrestlers. We haven't, we have, no, we haven't done, we haven't a, done top. a top five in 110 episodes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we should bring sisters. that back. We should. It was the best. Actually, was, they were always the bottom the, five, though. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Well, it was the well, they were the top five, five worst, worst some things. It was the top <laughs> five worst, and then the, for a while we couldn't get to five, so we did the top four. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is we'd always like we didn't know which ones to put on because we'd always put so many on the list, but then there's four of us, so then we'd like be like, oh, you get you get one, you get one, you get one, and then there's like this 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 like odd man out, which like <laughs> somehow has to be on it. It's strange. Yeah, yeah. It should be just well, like an well. RNG, just like goes in. We just like out of the pool of all the ones we decide, just sticks. Yeah. We should just have a stick puppet of Lando Calrissian. Similar to how you do with Cards Against Humanity, you do Rando. Rando. Rando <laughs> Calrissian. It's like a little puppy puppet that's like, this game was the worst! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should, we should definitely bring that back, though. We'll think about it for next week. So what you're saying is we need to commission someone to make a Lando Calrissian puppet for us. <laughs> yes. It's worth every yes. dime. 100, 110% yes. It, it has to be like Muppets, though. It has to have like a, a face that's like disconnected, like the mouth just goes <laughs> all the way around. <laughs> yes. For, with like furry and googly eyes. <laughs> and like, I mean, the eyes that don't focus on anything. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right, that officially does bring us to the end of the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes. Rate us on iTunes. Uh, subscribe. You can subscribe to us on uh, SoundCloud, and we're also on Stitcher and Player FM, and uh, and Twitter yeah. and everything. And DM Twitter, us. DM us on Twitter, Facebook. Tell us what you think. MySpace. This. <laughs> So make, yeah, make sure just make make sure you uh, make sure you go to lngamers.com and check out. Um, we actually have quite a bit of content on there right now, um, and it's been dated pretty pretty frequently. So go to that, uh, check it out. We also have a bunch of different um, game series uh, from from Megan, who on YouTube. So subscribe to us on YouTube. Check out her videos. Check out my videos. Check out whatever we have on there. Uh, she just did Layers of Fear, which is a horror game. So, it's cool. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, apart apart from that, you can also find us on the Pod Bros Network at podbros.com, and a bunch of other uh, excellent podcasts out there. So it's a it's a good place to to visit. Um, but yeah, above all, thank you all for listening. Continue to listen. We appreciate it. <laughs> we want you back. <laughs> I want you back. Is it, isn't that a song? It Jackson Five. Oh, that's right. That's right. I don't want to sing that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody for listening. Thank you Charles. Thank you Tim. Thank you Steve. I'm Nick. This has been Late Night Gamers Podcast, episode number one hundred and thirty-one. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Later. See ya. <laughs>